Dear viewers, hi, nice to meet you. I am Rainstorm Riddles, and this is my trial run of um, showing you my art. Um, this little art series I'm doing is I'm making some of the superchargers into minis. This video is totally unscripted. I'm just going to kind of be talking about what I'm doing, and if I run out of that, I'll find something else to talk about. Um, so I'm starting off the series here with Nightfall. She's probably my favorite of the new superchargers. I really, really like this character. Her design, her personality, it's a lot of fun. Um, and so she was my first pick to start this little mini series. Now, drawing kids is its own kind of challenge, shaking a character from an adult to a kid. And I'll explain through some of the things that I do to kind of make her look younger. But for now, I want to explain that <laughs> I uh, made the mistake of trying something new with this one, where I tried using a vector um, panel instead of layer instead of a usual raster layer and for the most part it worked normally and that was great and then I found the things that didn't work so normally and that wasn't so great so you'll notice that um, the drawing the lines is fine drawing them is fine erasing them is really really weird on this vector layer um, I'm not gonna try this again in the future videos where I do the other five superchargers that I'm gonna do I will just use normal modes and so I wasted a bunch of time just trying to figure out this out uh, there was one other thing that got really weird later down the line I'll explain when that comes up so here you're just seeing that I'm really fiddling with her eyes in our mask position. I usually start with a character's eyes to kind of start getting that expression and then build the face and the body around that. This one, um, I want very simple lines. Sometimes, depending on my mood, I'll be a very messy drawer and I'll just kind of throw a bunch of stuff out and go back and clean it up. Here I kind of fiddled with just kind of getting the lines right, especially because with the way the vector was erasing that I didn't want to have to go back and clean a bunch of lines because it was a pain let me tell you um so the first thing I'm doing here with Nightfall to make her look younger is I'm actually shortening her mask so what you get with a lot of baby animals kitties especially you'll notice that a kitten's nose is actually pretty flat against their face and when they grow older that elongates so to get that younger look the first thing I'm doing with her is I'm making the mask smaller um, it worked all right. It kind of looked a little weird to me for a while after finishing this, but I think it worked out all right. Okay, yeah, so you're seeing me fiddle here a lot with a bunch of this. Honestly, I'm not editing out all the mess ups. You in the next one, you're actually going to see me, like, draw an entire face and erase the whole thing over. I like being able to let you guys see that, honestly, art isn't a one-try magical, there you go, it's done, and it's perfect, it's pretty. It is messy, it is trial and error, it is fiddling with the little details, but it is a lot of fun, and I get a lot of enjoyment about out of it. This whole drawing from start to finish probably took me around three hours to do. That is not a lot of time, all things considered. It's a smaller, much smaller, simpler drawing. Um, part of that, probably a solid 30 minutes was me trying to get the vector layer to work. Not something I would recommend. I'm not going to do that again unless I need to. And that's why I was trying this out in the first place. So if ever I wanted to make, say, stickers, I wanted, I want to know how to use the tools that I have. I am relatively new to using digital art. I've started, oh, what's it's been? A couple years ago, I've started digital art, and I've gotten a lot better. I've gotten um, some tools that allow me to do it a lot better as well. Um, but yeah, that's just part of the learning curve, and that's part of why I'm doing this, because I want to practice my art skills. And so this whole series of the minis is also very much for me to get familiar with drawing these characters repeatedly, because I want to be able to do some bigger stories with them. And once I start drawing a character a couple times in a couple different ways, I really kind of grow familiar with how they look, and I'm able to draw them a lot more easily with a lot less effort in the future, and it works out really well for me. I think here I'm just fiddling with the position on the page, trying to get it to, um, not necessarily center. You never want a drawing dead center, but to kind of leave room for everything else. I'm going to have fun here in a minute. Let's see. 
So with little kids, the body pose says a lot about their character. Body position, um, not just hands and face, but their entire body is super important to communicating character. And so that's what I'm kind of getting done here. And Nightfall as a little kid. Um, so as an adult, Nightfall is very confident, a little pretentious. She very irritable. Um, she's she's kind of the grumpy, grumpy girl of the group. And I love her for it. It's great. But as a little kid, kids kind of being in a sour, grumpy mood all the time doesn't really happen. Kids have bad days, but when you've got, um, let's see, usually sh the minis are probably somewhere between 7 to 10, maybe 12 years old, I guess. I don't know, some of the Skylanders um, are kind of implied to have started up as teenagers, so I wouldn't go as high as a teenager for a mini. I'd say... 8 to 10 is probably their age, and there you could get a little more um, grumpy attitude. I'm kind of drawing these guys even younger than that in mind, because frankly, if you look at the mini's designs, some of them like Bop, he looks like a baby, baby dragon. He could be, um, I'm going to say, in dragon years, who knows, but as a um, human reference, probably about five years old. And so that's kind of where I'm hitting the range in this art in my mind frame. It's probably... Yeah, four to seven years old. On the, leaning on the younger end, I work with a lot of younger kids, so their um, tendencies are a lot more familiar to me. Okay, back to what I was saying before about little um, Nightfall here, is that she wouldn't have had quite that confidence as a little kid. In fact, I think she would have been a little more shy around new people as a little kid. Once she grows familiar, then she could be stubborn as heck, I bet ya. Um, <clears throat> but I think... So that's where kind of where I'm going here. I'm going for a bit more, not super shy. Is not gonna is gonna run away from you, but is a little more hesitant. Gonna cautiously watch what's going on before making any moves. That's kind of where I'm going here with Nightfall. Not outspoken. Um, just just kind of chill, curious, but reserved. That hook. That angle on the hook, it took me forever to get that kind of where I liked it. And a part of it is, so usually when I do these, I will have the figure itself in hand, and I'll use that as a good reference point. Huge, huge help having the actual figure of these on hand. But, um, like with the hook there, sometimes, it's a funny thing about art, sometimes you could draw something perfectly of what it looks like in real life, but it'll look really, really weird in art form. So that's where I was trying to fix up the hook and make it so it was kind of accurate to the angle, but then it make it look right in person. Hands here. Hands are one of my favorite things to draw actually because they are so expressive and it's kind of fun to play around with all you can do, but I will admit they are a pain and it usually takes a good bit of fiddling around before I am happy with how a hand looks. But I have her hand up here for a reason, you'll see here in a little bit. A little cheat is really just to kind of draw the um, ovals for the tips of the fingers based on position. Um, the way to get the hand look between the fingers is something that I've not really worked out how to get right. Um, but yeah, thankfully this one I could kind of cheat and ignore it here because the way I'm going to have her hair positioned. Nightfall's hair is one of my favorite things to draw. It's just so fun and you can go so wild with it and just kind of do whatever and it looks great. It's fun. See, just made you go everywhere. I like the idea of her hair as a little kid just kind of falling in front of her face. I actually wish I did even a little bit more and added some smaller strands, but it turned out good, I think, with how it shaped out. I love the little hooks in her hair, that's a lot of fun too. Okay, so now you're kind of getting a picture of what the whole thing is going to look like. And so here's the other thing I've done to really make her look much smaller and younger. It's hard to do, so obviously make the eyes bigger. That's always the first thing to do to make a little kid look 
or look a character look younger and then also shrinking their body or enlarging their head whichever way you want to go those are kind of the first steps to making something look younger but they aren't all you want to do another big part of making a character look younger is to look make another part of their body look awkwardly big look out of place this can be done with the hands and the feet so that's a really fun way to do it but with nightfall here i really did it with her hair it's just so big and surrounding her and i just thought that would be very cute to look at so yeah that's why i'm having um it go so far and just kind of pool around her um yeah and it really helps her look a lot smaller in the midst of all So yeah, going back and racing, you can see like the little bits. I don't know how well it'll show in the time lapse, but they were not easy to erase in the vector layer. A vector layer uses um, math formulas to create the image, for those who don't know. So a uh, normal layer is called different things, but I think this one's called a raster. Um, they use pixels to make the image, and so you, whatever you erase, you erase. With the vector image, it's a math equation. That way, whenever you expand the image, it does not become pixelated. No matter how much you shrink or expand a vector image, it do doesn't change in quality. Or I wouldn't say quality, but it doesn't change um, in pixel rate. But the downside to that is it's just kind of a pain to work with because these math things want it to be a certain way. And that's not necessarily how you as the artist want it to work. Um, okay, so coloring in the background before you color in a character is something that's really, really helpful, especially when you're working with a character with a lot of blacks and a lot of whites. Um, it, too dark of a background and you can't tell where you're missing. And then obviously with the light background, you can't really tell where you're missing your white. And it also helps you give an idea of the shades you're working with. Um, if I had a pure white background here working with her darker colors, it would be really hard to tell with that brightness in your eyes. Um, what the shades of blacks and with black you never want to start with pitch black that's kind of a um, formula for disaster right there so going for really dark gray frankly is always what you want to do almost never to use full black unless, except for the line art out here I want to generally keep these minis uh, a little bit simpler actually on the next one I went too detailed frankly but I like what I have here I'm just I'm not gonna bother trying to get too much of the metallic look to her coat, just simple flat colors to start. Well, I always fill it in with just simple black, flat colors typically and then go back in and add the shading. Of course, I'm gonna prove myself wrong that here in the next video, but hey, you know, whatever the mood is. I missed that spot on her shirt on my first run. Okay, there we go. So yeah, I'm just kind of coloring it in. Um, the program I go with, I don't think I haven't figured out how to do a um, select fill with before putting in a color. So I can select a color and then start shading it in. But honestly, I kind of like just coloring it in my hand. It's one of those kind of relaxing things and all the more satisfying know that I drew the original line art and I'm not just using a coloring book. I love her little shoulder pad, pad frills. They're a lot of fun. It took a little while fiddling with the grace um, for her mask. So when doing metal, um, if you use just flat gray, you've got to pay attention to the slight changes in shade with gray. Um, same is true actually with the blacks and whites, that whole gray scale. And typically with metal, it looks better if you give it just a tiniest bit of blue into the mix. And it'll look a lot more silvery and metal-y, if that makes any sense. So again, here with the white, I am not starting with pure white. I'm starting with just a little bit below that. Um, oh, <laughs> here you're finding out what the second issue with the vector layer is. And that is, so I have the white area selected. So that what that should mean is that I should be able to shade her eye and the airbrush shouldn't be able to touch anything else. What is happening is that I shade it in and I lift my pen and suddenly the airbrush is all over the parts it's not supposed to be. That was a pain to figure out, and that is actually the primary reason I'm not going to try vector layers in these anymore. Um, the erasing was a pain, but it could I could fiddle with it and get it to work. The airbrush here, I kind of had to go through a few cheats, and I don't want to hassle with that again. 
So that's the second problem. But back to the, uh, what was I saying again? It was about the eyes and the white. Same reason, same reason. Um, partially because um, to, it's better to work with slightly below or above whichever white or black you're working with. And then also um, with characters with pure white eyes, you do kind of want to give a little bit of a hint of, as to where they're looking. And to do that, you just kind of give them a spot in the eye that is pure white. Um, it's subtle, and if you aren't looking for it, sometimes it just, you won't notice it. But I think it helps just a little bit. With her hair color. So, Nightfall's a little tricky in that her hair color is different in everything. Her, um, official art has a kind of a more lavender, dark, fa fading from lavender to black. In-game, it is just jet black ink. And then her figure, which I actually think is the best, uh, appearance of her hair is uh, it is fading from the black um, plastic to the purple plastic but it is closer to this purple here and I like this and when doing art I like going more on the purple end I think it just um, complements the character a lot better and it's just more visually pleasing frankly and it's kind of fun you gotta remember as an artist sometimes just take creative liberties like that and just make it look good it's kind of about having fun with the character not about being perfectly accurate here again I'm having to fiddle with the shading you can see how it's on her coat um purple on her head just yeah this is me uh screaming on the inside trying to figure this out and make it work yeah i'm trying a couple different things to see what will make this work i try to look into the settings see if there's a way to fix it there wasn't really what happens it i did find is that um, what it is doing, it is just filling, so if I were to take my airbrush outside of the line, it would only airbrush, it's assuming that the airbrush ended within the line, but it is filling in the airbrush spray around that, if that makes any sense. So basically what I did is I airbrushed kind of in the middle, then went back with a normal pen and just filled in underneath to kind of make it look like it was airbrush shaded. It's a little clunky in some parts you can see there. But it worked well enough to pass. You know, it's gonna fool people. See? Totally. I had this under control the whole time. Beautiful. I didn't go overboard. I wasn't planning to go overboard in the shading and textures in general. And this, like I mentioned before, I want this to be a little more simple. But you do want to add enough to kind of show um, the fluidity of her hair, honestly. Um... I don't really call them tentacles much because it really is more like a kind of semi-solid, semi-liquid ink mass. And it's, I don't know, it's really fun texture. It's not something I've ever seen done like that. I mean, I'm, I've, we've seen snake hair, tentacle hair, and all that. But I've also really got a unique feel to hers. And it's just a lot of fun. A lot of fun to play with. She's, I know a lot of people give her a lot of flack for um, some of her moves not being direct damage, but I have a lot of fun playing with her because it's really about one, not getting hit, and B, really just kind of keeping anybody else from even having a chance to attack her. With her ability to throw people into the air, if you learn how to use that right and time it right, it is very, very effective at stopping enemies before they can ever get a touch on her. I have, with plenty of effort managed to beat the Imaginator's arena battles on expert mode with her a few times. It's I can do it about once every 10 times. It kind of depends. Um, depends on how I'm playing. It definitely is not easy by any means. And it depends sometimes on the characters that I get. Most of it she can handle. And what's really fun is when you get an entire horde of enemies, of middle range enemies, so the sheep with the big claws, the plant thingies, and the rats, sometimes it will throw in like 15 of those guys at once. And her soul gem is to basically lift everybody in the area that's not a tank and just damage them in the air, then slam them all to the ground for bonus uh, 25 damage on the Imaginator's game. And she will take out that entire group without a single hit, and it's wonderful. Where it's not so wonderful is when you've got a bunch of the sheep guys all at once. So if, usually where I die is when you've got two of the Goliath sheep. Those are the big guys with the gigantic swords, the tanks. And then the mage sheep. Oh yeah, so after finishing this, I just kind of refiddled her hair. The mage sheep are a pain because they don't get affected by her hair. They just run away. 
last minute changes. Okay, so there you go. That is my final, um, well, kind of. I actually went back and changed her background a little bit. I wasn't entirely happy with the color. It looked good at first, then it didn't. And I'm not sure if the one I went back to is all that great either, but you know what? All's well that ends well. Here is Little Nightfall. I really hope you guys enjoyed this little spiel of mine. Um, next time I'm going to be doing Little Astroblast. A note on the name... Night Drop, it works really well. Nightfall, Night Drop, you should be able to make the connections. Um, naming these guys is part of how I picked who I'm going to do, is just if I could find an appropriate name, because you can't do many if you don't have a good mini name for them. So let me know what you guys think. Um, let me know who you're excited for me to do. And frankly, if this goes over well, I might go ahead and do the other two superchargers as well. I am not doing the um, senior supercharges, what I'll call them, the eight returning characters, because frankly, all of them, except for Roller Brawl, already have their mini version, and so I'm just gonna stick with the newer superchargers that we got. So have a good day, thank you, um, till next time, bye!